Hi, welcome to my latest video. Tonight, I'm out here, it's getting dark. It isn't autumn, it isn't winter, it's actually spring. And if I don't hurry up and film my LED bulb video series, it's going to be summer and it's going to be not dark. And that's not very good when you want to see what LED bulbs look like in the dark. So, tonight is the night. Finally, I'm going to start filming this. I did plan to do it back in September, October. I went on to Amazon and eBay and I bought basically all of the LED bulbs. I spent about £700. We've got every possible make of bulb that you could imagine here. Not just headlight bulbs, we've got brake lights, side lights, reverse lights, indicators, fog lights, everything in here. We've even got some Ford Transit van interior lights, okay? More in that box there. I've even bought a light meter here where I can actually effectively measure the lumens output of these big bright headlight bulbs. I've got my whiteboard here, okay? So some of you have left comments saying that you really like the whiteboard lectures that I do. Well, you're gonna love this video because there's loads of whiteboard lectures and drawings in this, I'm going to look at what is an LED bulb, how do they work, which bulbs on the car can you change to LEDs, because you can't change all of them. Some of them don't work and some of them are illegal, okay? So we'll look at the, the law and the regulations uh, for vehicle lighting. I'm going to try and use this, this light meter to measure the brightness of the headlight bulbs. And we'll also look at things like the CAN bus system. Okay, so what issues can arise from that? Now I've got my notes here. I'm just gonna quickly have a quick run through of what I plan to do in each of the six videos. So the first video, this one, I'm gonna look at the theory. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about how an LED works and I'm also going to explain how I'm going to use this light meter to measure brightness of LEDs. In part two, I'm going to look at the dip and main beam LEDs, okay? I thought about gearing up to that as the series goes on, but that's the video that you all really want to see, okay? When people change bulbs to LEDs, it's usually the headlight that they, they do, okay? So we'll, we'll cover that as the first bulbs on the car. That will be in part two. This video is just a, a sort of an introduction video. And part two, we'll look at dip, main, the regulations. We'll also look at spotlights, light bars, how to wire those up. We'll, we'll look at um, how these are driven, okay? So they're not driven with relays. They're driven with field effect transistors. So we'll talk about that. And I'm also going to have a look at how you fit H7 bulbs, okay, so like this, that's an H7. Now, because it's got that kind of fan on the back there, you can't use the standard clips. H11s aren't a problem because you just sort of put that in and turn it, and then you can connect in on the plug on the side. But these ones here, these are the, the bulbs that I want to run in my main beam, the Philips alternans to match what I've put in the dip, but if you just sort of fit them in, they're loose. So we need some kind of clippy things. Now these here, this is the white one that I used to run with those silver bulbs. You can't really get these on eBay now, but I did find these ones, which don't seem to work. And then I decided to try and make my own okay so we'll look at those how to actually hold those bulbs into the headlight in the back of the headlight okay so that that is something that causes people a lot of issues they they buy the bulbs and then they find that they're, they're just rattling around loose because they need some kind of clippy adapter things to to hold them in okay so that will be all covered in part two part three we will move on to side lights brake lights, high level brake lights, reverse lights. We'll look at what happens with the CAN bus because that can cause side lights to actually stay on after you've locked the car, which is a bit unnerving. 
rear light clusters and tinted bulbs. So here we have some indicator bulbs. You can see there, they're normal bulbs, but they're the sort of tinted type, okay? So if you're running clear lenses, then you can't run white LED bulbs. You need bulbs that actually light up yellow or red. If your lenses are tinted, um, sort of like red plastic or yellow plastic, then you can run white bulbs. But the different types of bulbs have different lug patterns, the actual sort of little lug things on the end of the bit there. They're, they're different, okay? So which ones do you need and which ones will fit which light clusters? One other problem is with brake lights and side lights that are combined, like on the Freelander 2, the bulb has a 5 watt and 21 watt sort of equivalent uh, light built in the same bulb, okay? LEDs are often very similar brightnesses, which mean then that people cannot see you braking and, and that could, could cause an issue. So we'll look at the difference in the brightness between those two. And also one other thing that can happen with LED bulbs is you get radio interference. So I've actually fitted an LED bulb in my high level brake light and every time I press the brake pedal, I get um, interference on the radio, which is quite annoying. In part four, I will have a look at fog lights, front and rear. Okay, so I will fit LED rear fog lights and I will also look at the options for the front fog light because you can get some special bulbs and there's some in here somewhere which actually change colour. I don't think it's those ones. Here they are. These ones here, when you first turn these on, they give out a white light. And then when you turn them off and turn them on again, they give a yellow light, okay? So you can actually change the colour using the same bulb, which is quite a nice feature because yellow light works much, much better in fog. Okay, it seems to sort of cut through rain and fog. I've actually got yellow Osram fog breaker bulbs in, in my fog lights at the front, uh, and they work really well to sort of cut through any, any rain and mist low down to the road. I can see much, much further ahead with those than I could with white bulbs. In part five, I'm going to look at indicator bulbs and I'm also going to have a look at ballast resistors, okay? So with indicator bulbs, if you just change them to LEDs, the indicators flash far too fast, okay? Because the, the computer thinks the bulbs have blown, so it flashes them double speed to warn you. But you need to fit ballast resistors to trick the ECU into thinking that it has normal bulbs fitted. And then finally, in part six, we'll have a look at other bulbs, other bulbs on the car, interior bulbs. We've got the bulbs under the, the mirrors here, the sort of puddle lights. There's also the number plate bulbs, number plate illumination LEDs. Okay, so I fitted some up underneath here. You can just about kind of see those. And those are the powerful UK LED number plate lights. There are also LED conversions that you can get for the, the reflectors here on the back, which sort of light them up like a sort of extra side lights. So we can have a look at that. And then finally, I'll have a look at daylight running lights, okay? So the DRLs, which some cars have now. I think it's a, a law that all new cars have to have daylight running lights. Causes a lot of problems because some makes of car, they don't put the rear side lights on when the DRLs are on and then you end up with people driving in the fog with just the front lights and no rear lights, which is really dangerous. Automatic headlights tend to go wrong when it's heavy rain and, and, and mist and fog, they, they just don't see that it's foggy. They think it's just a cloudy day. So that is a bit of a problem. And I'm gonna be looking at the DRLs 
and what the rules are around those. Okay, so that is the list of what I'm going to be covering. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the camcorder on the tripod here and I'm just going to draw out on my whiteboard a little bit of a diagram of an LED to explain what LEDs are and how they work. Let's rub out my winch wiring diagram that was featured in a recent video. I'm just going to draw out now a very simple diagram to show what happens inside an LED. So an LED is a light emitting diode. It is a diode, it is an electronic component that allows current to flow in one direction. So we have two pins on this device and our LED body is usually some sort of dome kind of thing. And I'm talking about the traditional LED components here, not the flat LED bulbs that you now see in headlights and head torches and things like that. Okay, so that has two pins. One of them is called the anode. Anode. And the other one, let's use blue, is the cathode. Okay. So the anode is the positive and the cathode is the negative. So the current comes in and flows that way. Inside this LED, we have some metal that is shaped a little bit like this. The cathode has a sort of a cup on it, okay? If you look at an LED under a microscope, you will actually see a, a little sort of cup and inside that cup, there is a small cube of semiconducting material. And let's draw this, I'm running out of colors here. Let's use red again. That little cube has two layers to it. The green layer here, which is connected to the cathode, that is called the N-type. And then the other layer, so it's like a sort of semiconductor sandwich. So there is a N-type layer here. Let's color that in, okay and then the other top half of the layer is the p-type okay so that that is p-type okay and there is a small connecting wire which links to there now this semiconductor sandwich, or semiconductor junction as it's called, will allow current to flow in one direction. And in LEDs, when those electrons flow, now everybody thinks of current flowing from positive to negative. In reality, electrons actually flow the other way. They actually, believe it or not, flow from negative to positive. That's down at a sort of electron level. And when that happens and the electrons cross the junction, light is emitted. Okay, and light comes out because some of those electrons convert their energy into photons of light. 
That is how an LED works. Okay. Red LEDs, so years ago we had red, yellow and green LEDs. That was all there is. They hadn't invented blue LEDs. So red LEDs operate at around 640 nanometers wavelength, okay? And they use gallium and arsenic. So it's gallium arsenide is the main chemical used, okay? So that's gallium arsenide, okay? And that gives off a red light, very narrow wavelength in the spectrum, 640 nanometers, that's red. Yellow LEDs use some phosphorus as well, okay? So yellow LEDs, so yellow is around 600 nanometers, and they use gallium arsenide phosphide, okay? So gallium and arsenide, same as red, but with the addition of a bit of phosphorus. And then as the wavelength shortens further, we have green LEDs, okay? Green, and they operate at around 560 nanometers wavelength and they use gallium and phosphorus, no arsenic. So it's gallium phosphide. But I hear you asking, what about blue LEDs? Well, for many, many years, we didn't have blue LEDs. They hadn't been invented. And then three Japanese scientists, Shuji Nakamura, Hiroshi Amano and Akasaki Isamu invented blue LEDs and they actually won, jointly won the Physics Nobel Prize for that. And blue LEDs operating at around 450 nanometers use Gallium nitride, okay. No phosphorus, no arsenic. Gallium nitride. And that was very, very difficult to produce. And it was really the production technique that won those three scientists the Nobel Prize. Once blue LEDs had been invented, we could then have white LEDs. But white LEDs are not a mixture of red, green, and blue, as everybody wrongly thinks they are. A white LED is actually a blue LED, but by adding a bit of phosphorus, like over here, the phosphorus has a, a scattering effect of the wavelength. So it increases the wavelength pulling it more towards the red, yellow, and green, but it's kind of like random scattered. So if you add some phosphorus, you end up with lots of different wavelengths. And that is what white light is. White light is, is, is all of the wavelengths. It's not just red or yellow or green or blue. It's a variety of wavelengths across the visible spectrum. And that is why we didn't get white LEDs until after blue LEDs had been invented. You can't shorten the wavelength, so you can't just add phosphorus to one of these and get white. It only works in the other direction. So you have to start off with blue and then add phosphorus to enlarge those wavelengths to give you the other colours. So that is LED theory, that is how an LED works. And I'm now going to move on to talking about lumens and lux. What is the difference? How can we measure 
lumens with a Lux light meter. So now that we've looked at what is an LED bulb, how does it actually work deep down inside? I'd like to talk about how we measure the light output from LED bulbs. Now this doesn't really apply so much to things like indicator bulbs and brake lights and that, although we could try and measure those. It's more for these big, expensive, powerful bulbs here. These headlight bulbs, main beam bulbs. I've got a selection of them here. Got quite a few, and these were not cheap to buy. Okay, so we've got the Osram, we've got the, whatever that is, LED driving. Okay, I don't like the way they've done that. Uh, and, and then we've got also LED driving XTR, okay. So off-road only, there you go, off-road only. Okay, now what is this? Is this off-road only? I don't know. Probably, probably. But for main beam, it's not so bad. Okay, because main beam, the regulations are a little bit more relaxed. I've also got some Kachur and Zethors, and, and these were recommended as well, these Orkito ones. There are some pretty wild claims about the lumen rating, okay? So, so back in the day, we used to measure bulbs by, by wattage, okay? So these old-style element bulbs are 21 watt. There you go. That means 21 watts of electrical power. The equivalent light output um, is, is, is a, it, it's 21 watts of electrical power being turned into, into heat and light, okay? When it comes to LEDs, you can't really measure them in watts. I mean, there is a wattage, okay? But it's a heck of a lot less than with a normal element bulb. LEDs are much more efficient. They don't draw anywhere near as much current as an element bulb. So measuring it in watts doesn't really give a true comparison. So a different unit was required. And the unit of choice is the lumen, okay? So what is a lumen? Well, a lumen is a unit of light output, okay? So it is light radiating away. So it's the irradiance, I think it's called, of the light. So think of it like the, the lumen is the light it's giving out, and then there is another unit called lux, which is the light you're receiving, okay? The units are different, and they're not completely interchangeable. There are formula to sort of convert from one to the other, and I'm going to try and show you that in a moment, okay? So the reason why we need to convert from lumens to lux is my light meter here. That's measuring lux. Okay, there you go. 462 lux. Now I've got bright light here. I've got a head torch on. I've got my light over there. It's not completely dark here. It's, it's uh, spring nearly, so it sort of uh, gets dark at about seven o'clock now. So this is measuring in lux, but the headlight bulbs are lumens, okay? So when it comes to dip beam, there is a, a maximum legal amount of the lumens. I forget what it is. I will put it at the bottom of the screen now. I think it's something like 1,300. A normal headlight bulb, so a normal sort of halogen headlight bulb, not, not a sort of 200% or the Philips um, Diamond Vision or Rosram Nightbreaker, but a normal, normal bulk standard element bulb will give out typically around about 1,000 lumens of light, okay? So it's sort of 700 to 1200 lumens, depending on the, the, the type and the, the chemicals and the gas used inside it and things like that. Okay, these LED bulbs have much, much higher lumen output. And with main beam, that's great because you go to main beam, there's no one around and you can see for miles, okay. I've gone down the light bar route, okay, so I don't know if you can see that, there it is. I've got a light bar on the roof. And at the moment, I'm just running Element H7s in my main beam. In the next video, I'm going to look at fitting these 
into my main beam. My dip, I'm actually sneakily running LEDs in my dip. Now, that's something I said I'd never do, but I did a whole video on that, my headlight upgrade video. My most recent video, I think it will probably be uh, the one before the last video when when you come to, to watch this, okay? So there'll be a video on the bulb clearance probably, and then before that will be headlight upgrade, okay? And I look at the reasoning behind going down the LED route, okay, for that. So you have to be a bit careful. It is an MOT failure, but only if the MOT tester can see the bulb and see that you're running LEDs, okay? So there's a bit of a story to tell behind that. So watch the video, all will become clear. But in the next video, I'm going to be focusing on main beam. There's another reason why I'm not going to be doing dip, and that's because these new headlights have got H11s, and my main beam is H7, and I bought H7 bulbs, okay? Because I bought these months ago when I had the old twin H7 headlights, okay? So these won't fit in my dip. Doesn't matter. I'm happy with the dip, happy with the bulbs I've got in there and these are way way too bright okay it does say sort of off-road only and that's because they're just stupidly bright these ones here right these are on amazon Katur. i've got to get these the right way around the Katur, i think are rated 16,000 lumens that's 16 times a normal headlight bright these these are 20,000 lumens 20 times as bright you cannot run things like that in dip beam you're 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 going to get pulled over you're going to be blinding other motorists if you search youtube for uh super bright led headlights there's loads of videos of people crashing because they've been blinded by cars coming the other way with ridiculously bright led bulbs i fitted the phillips alternans in, in here which are rated 350 percent brighter than a standard bulb now bear in mind the halfords and the ring pro and the um the lucas bulbs that i bought recently they were all 200 percent and they weren't that bright okay they, they were okay you know just about just about bright enough really um, any less and you, you you just can't see where you're going okay so 350 you bet that's about the limit really for dip but main beam yeah you know let's go for it um you, 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 the regulations don't state a maximum brightness for main beam i've got a 42 inch light bar on the roof that is about i don't know i think it's 20 26 000 lumens or something like that and you can get light bars that are like 50 000 lumens but when no one's around on main beam it's fine it's fine Put the lights on see where you're going how do we measure that though are these wild claims true uh, is this just different amazon and ebay sellers just trying to kind of outdo each other by upping their lumen figures well we can actually measure it and i have this light meter here this measures in lux okay which is different to lumens. It doesn't measure lumens. It measures the light is receiving, okay? So that is lux. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna wipe out my whiteboard. I'm gonna put the camera back on the tripod, wipe this out, and I'm going to try to explain how we can measure lumens with a lux light meter. It, it's a little bit tricky. There will be some mathematics there may even be some trigonometry. So cast your mind back to your GCSEs or O-levels at school and remember your sine, cos and tan, okay? Because I'm going to be using that in a minute. And uh, yeah, there's going to be some sort of uh, formulae and pi and all that kind of stuff, okay? So uh, um, area of a base of a cone and... Uh, trigonometry to find out sort of sides of a triangle and that okay so I'm gonna do that now I will try and make it as as painless as possible and uh, yeah and that will be it for this video that'll be it and then in the next video we'll actually fit some of these and we'll actually measure them 
and we'll see if these wild claims are really true. Okay, so I'm going to rub out the LED chemistry lecture. Yeah, I this is making a bit of a mess. Oh, come on. Oh, dearie me, it's staining the whiteboard. What is going on here? They're supposed to be dry white pens. Okay, all right, okay, it's sort of stained my lovely clean white bulb with, with yellow. Um, never mind, never mind. Right, let's get some pens out. Okay, so let's get a selection of colours again. So we get the blue, red, black. Okay, so now I need to get my own notes out on this. Right, bear with me on this. This is going to be a little bit painful. Right, let's draw, let's find the orange pen and the yellow pen, okay? I'm going to draw a, a light source, okay? So let's pretend our light sources are sort of a flame, like a flickery flame, okay? Um, it, it could be an element, it could be an LED, it could be anything giving off light, okay? So that is giving off light. So let's say that that light source, that bulb or LED, whatever it is, is giving out a light output of one lumen. It's not very powerful, okay? So a dim LED bulb just gives out one lumen, one thousandth of a typical car headlight bulb light output. How can we measure that? Well, we can measure in lux, okay? And lux is the light being received by something, okay? So there is an area that is receiving that light so one lux equals one lumen per square meter. Okay, so when this light falls onto one square meter, it is one lux and lux is what my light meter measures. So what that means is that if you could surround this light source by a sphere, so let's assume for now that it's giving out that light in all directions. Now, of course, a bulb doesn't quite do that. Nothing really shines downwards on a bulb. It's all sort of kind of sideways and a little bit at the front. But just for the theory, let's say that that is giving out light equally in all directions. So if this sphere here had an area of one square meter and the light was hitting the inside of that, then one lux would be measured throughout that square meter area. Okay, so the area of a sphere, let's just draw, this is where we get into the maths. Okay, the area of a sphere is 4 times pi times r squared. Okay, so r is the distance there, the radius. Okay, so three dimensions, it's a sphere, not, not a circle. Okay, so the radius of the sphere squared times pi, which is 3.141, da, 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 times 4, gives us that area. Now, what we know is that that area is, is 1. Okay, so let's get my board rubber. We've, we know that the area is 1. We've just talked about that. Okay, so it's a 1 square metre area, right, okay, and we know pi, we know 4, 
so we can work out what R is. And we get, now I'm just gonna, I'm gonna be running out of room slightly here. So rearranging that, okay, so what we do is we pull the four pi down there. Okay, so, so let's just do this. If my pen will work, come on, four pi there. Get rid of that. And then we can square root that to get rid of the square. So r is the square root of one over four pi. And we know what pi is, 3.14 times four, one divided by that, square root of that, equals a magic number, 0 0.282 meters. That is the radius. So if you were to measure with your light meter, 28.2 centimeters from the central light source that was giving out one lumen, you would measure one lux. And that is how we can measure lumens with a lux meter. Now, headlight bulbs and headlight beams are, of course, completely different, okay? They're not a sphere. The light doesn't all come out evenly in every direction. So what I'm gonna do now is get rid of all of this and we will try to draw how things are for a headlight. Okay, so here is a car. Let's just draw a car. Um, mm, 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 some wheels and the window. Right, somebody sat in the car. Okay, and there is a headlight on the front of the car. That headlight is giving a, a sort of a beam of light, okay? So that is our sort of conical beam coming out. I do need to make the following three assumptions here. <clears throat> Firstly, that the light beam from each headlight is a round cone. So it's a round area of light at the end. Most headlights are not round beams, okay? They're not uh, a round cone. Most of them are a cone, because the, the headlight always diverges off. There's always a angle field of view. Uh, very, very rarely do they shine parallel, like a, like a laser, okay? Unless you've got some very narrow beam spotlights, but even those are gonna be cones uh, eventually. So, round cone, that's the first assumption. The second assumption is that the reflector in the headlight, I'm going to assume is a perfect reflector. Okay, so all the light emitted by the bulb comes out of the headlight, frontwards out of it, okay. We know that if you stand next to a car with the headlights on, you, you, you can sort of tell the headlights are on. Obviously you can see the light beam, but you you can see the light on the front of the car. Some light comes out sideways. Some light probably finds its way back out the back. There's, there's always gaps and holes and bulb holders and things like that. So it's never gonna be 100% of the light coming out the front. But for this theory, we will assume 100% is coming outwards in a round cone. The third, the Third, the third assumption that I've made is that the light emits from a single point, okay? So an infant, infant, infantesan, infinitesimally, a very small point of light, okay? So most of these bulbs have two LED light emitters on them and the, the structure of the bulb, it, 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 it just doesn't really come down to a, to a single point. Now these headlights that I've got on have the projector lens, so the light is really kind of coming out of that really and that's a, about three inches diameter, okay? So ignore the fact that this end of the cone may not be 
a very small point of light. This is just the theory. Okay, so we know that we've got a headlight bulb here and it's emitting vast amounts of light. Okay, so, you know, 16,000 lumens or whatever. All right, so here's our light beam, you know, coming out. The, the rays of light, the, the photons kind of coming out from the headlight. And let's say we're illuminating an, a round disc, okay, which is one square meter in area. Okay, so that's our, that's our, our lux, okay, so that's our one, well, well not one, but many, many lumens, 20,000 lumens onto one square meter gives us 20,000 lux. We've just just shown that in the previous whiteboard, okay? So, so long as that area is one square meter, we will measure the lumens as lux. The area, and bear with me, this is where things get a little bit more complicated, okay? So, the area of the, of the, the base of a cone, okay, is pi times r squared, okay, so there is an r there, okay, that has an area a, and we know the area is one, okay, that's one square meter. Now r, the radius of that circle, if you think about it, this cone is sort of a triangle, okay, now we all learnt trigonometry at school, sine, cos, tan, there are various ways of remembering the, the saying, I was told silly old Harry cracked all his teeth on asparagus, okay, and what that means is that if you want to find the length of the adjacent, uh, no, if you want to find the length of the opposite from this angle, uh, now let's call our, uh, let's call this X, okay, I was going to use a Greek letter then, but we'll just call it sort of, I uh, can't call it A, because we use A for the area. So if you want to find the, the opposite of a triangle, opposite side, it's called the opposite, okay, so you've got opposite hypotenuse, okay, and the adjacent, okay, adjacent to the angle. So the opposite, if you, if you want the opposite and you know the angle and the hypotenuse, you need to use sine, and if you, you want to know the adjacent and you know the hypotenuse and the angle, you use cos. And if you want the opposite and you know the adjacent, then you use tan. Okay, right. So what, do I, what am I talking about there? So this distance r, this radius here, r equals, so this is the r up here, r equals d distance, let's say distance, distance out from the car, d times tan of x, okay, so x is our angle here. So if you know that angle in degrees and you know this distance, you can calculate r, but we know this r, we know r, because there's an area of one square meter there. So we need to know d. So how far out from the car do I need to hold my light meter? That's what we're trying to work out. So let's rearrange this a little bit. So we've got area equals pi, times, and then we're swapping R in, okay, so we just put some brackets, D times tan of X, another bracket, squared, okay, things are getting a little bit complicated, bear with me, right, we're going to rearrange all of this now, okay, so we're going to move the square across to make a square root, and we'll move the pi across, and we'll end up with square root, of 
area divided by pi equals d times tan x. Okay. We can resolve that even more now. We know the area is 1. We know pi 3.141 and some more. Okay, but we'll go to three, three decimal places. Okay, so square root of 1 divided by 3.141 equals 0.56. Okay, so we've got 0.56 instead of this thing here. So that tan x can move down. If it goes across the equals, it goes down underneath. So we now have 0.56 divided by tan x equals d. We're nearly there. We're nearly there. x. What is x? Well, x is this angle here. It's half of the beam angle. And the beam angle on a headlight could be anything really, it could be 10 degrees, it could be 50 degrees. It depends on your headlights. Different spotlights have different beam angles. Now, I've done some vague kind of measuring of my headlights. These are the projector ones, which do give a fairly narrow beam. And it's about 30 degrees, okay? Now, it, it's a bit vague because you, you can actually see the headlights sort of all the way around, but, but we have to take that sort of the main part of the beam, okay? So the bit of the beam where there's the most light. And there is a bit of a cutoff at the edge, all right? So instead of X, we're gonna use 15, okay? 15 degrees, half a 30. Let's just put a little degree thing there so we know it's degrees. So 0 0.56 divided by tan of 15 degrees. Get your calculators out, try that now, and you will end up with 0 0.97 meters. What does that mean? It means that if I hold my light meter 0 0.97 meters, 97 centimeters, away from one of my headlights, it should roughly read the lumens on the screen as lux. So my light meter is effectively a lumen meter. Let's do that. Let's try it. Let's try it and see. Will it work? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the camera off the tripod. Okay. Take the camera off the tripod and put my headlights on now. There are sort of other lights. I've got this light on, I've got that light on. There's a solar light on my wall there. There's a street light over there. Um, yeah, it's pretty pretty dark now. But uh, my, my lumen meter, or lumen meter, my lux meter, my light meter, does actually have quite a nice feature. And that is that it has a rel button, a relative button. Okay, so let's see what it's measuring now, 900 or something. If I do rel, it'll kind of zero it, you see. It's a bit like um, on scales where you put your empty container on the scales and you, you, you tear, tear it, I think it's called, where you sort of uh, reset it to zero, accounting for the thing that you're going to put your flour or your sugar or whatever in. Okay, so let's take that off relative mode. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn all other light sources off. Okay, so that's off. This one will go off. Let's just put my, I'll just put my head torch on very dim. Okay, just so that we can kind of see. And then what I will do, and this is where things get a bit fiddly because I need two, three hands really. So my head torch actually has a, oh look, it's got an infrared mode. Stealth mode, oh, there's somebody coming. I better put it on so they can actually, ooh, 
so they can actually see me. There is a car over there who was sort of about to drive into me because they couldn't see me with all, all the lights off. Right, um, right, okay, right, let's, let's give this a go. Let's give this a go. Now, put that off and then put Navy SEAL mode on. There we go. Black Ops, there we go. Infrared, night vision. And then I'm going to, so the light output out here, I don't know if you, no, I don't know if you can really read that. It's like nine, nine lux, not a lot. So let's put a headlight on. Now, when I do this properly in the next video, I really ought to disable one of my headlights, okay? So let's see what this reads. Okay, come on. Uh, it's going to be really. Oh, I can hear the fans going on my uh, new bulbs. Got to get that right in. Now it was it was 97 centimeters, wasn't it? Oh, hang on. Somewhere I've got tape measure. Now I do need about four hands for this. Uh, three foot. Oh, I can't read it. Hang on a minute, I can't read it in red light because there's red markings on the tape measure. Right, 90, there you go. Right, let's just, let me just stand here. Now I can't, no, I need to really account for a bit. Let, let's, let's assume there's 10, there's about 10 centimetres from the uh, thing. Right, kitty, um, 10 centimetres um, between the the lens and the, the glass okay so let, let's go 87 this is all a bit basic all right we're just doing a a very rough test today so i'm going to put my foot what i'll do when i do this properly is i'll actually get the tripod set up with the light meter on it so it's absolutely bang on and i'll measure it um 87 Right, okay, so. Right, so where my foot is, is, let's put those on again. Now there is, a, I didn't spot, there's a times 10. It was giving like 1,500. Come on. 3,004. Yeah, so what we're looking for it's, it's around, f yeah, 400, 500 times 10. Okay. Now that was a very, very basic test. I'll do it much more accurately before I swap those over. Now these headlights are, let's put all our various lights back on. So these are my dip beam Philips Alternon Pro, okay. Now, the name of this particular bulb is 9100, and I think that's the lumens for two of them. So 4550, it might be wrong there, but it says 350%. 100% brighter is twice bright, so that's 2000 lumens. 200% would be three times, so that is 3000 lumens. 300% is 4,000 lumens. 350% would be 4,500. And that's, that's, we were seeing 450 to 500 uh, lux on the time 10 scale. Okay, so 4,500 to 5,000 lux at roughly, very roughly, 97 centimeters. Okay, our magic number here. Now, I will measure things a lot more accurately, but the good news is the light meter actually was giving kind of what I was expecting there. 4,500, 5,000 lumens, which is really, you know, that, that actually actually ties up with, with these bulbs. So what I'll do is put a standard H7, I think I've got 200% in at the moment, I'll disable dip I'll take that LED bulb out temporarily and 
we'll use this one here. We need to use this one here because these are all H7s and they, they only fit in here, not that one. So I'll put a standard bulb in and we'll, we'll kind of check that it's reading about a thousand lumens. And then I will increase up. I'll put in the Halfords 200%. We could try the Ring Pro, the Lucas, and then we can move on to the LEDs. So we've got about 20,000 lumens or something here. We will build up to that one. That's 16. I can't remember what the Auxitos were. 16, I think. These ones don't seem to have a lumen rating, so it'd be interesting to see what those read. And yeah, I, I think I've got more. Yeah, I've got more in here. So there's loads and loads of them. Look at these ones, Novsite. And they actually give you a pair of magician's gloves to wear. So, uh, yeah, that'll be interesting. Not very good at magic, but those look amazing. They've got a control module with them. I mean, God knows what's going on inside there. But th those are those are serious bulbs. Big fans on them. Big, big LED uh, elements uh, on there. So those are uh, some to try. Now what I can do, I can get my power supply out here, my 12 volt power supply. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll actually run out an extension lead. We'll actually power these up sort of on the bench, first of all, and just get a kind of a feel for what they look like. And then work my way through them. And when it comes to all the other bulbs, I think when it, you know, with red and yellow, it's, probably not really going to work with the light meter because that's sort of um, really designed for white light and for things like reverse lights and that I don't think it really matters what lumens they are as long as they work and you can vaguely see where you're going but in reverse um, yeah I think these ones here are these are some white reverse lights that I bought yeah Aglint ones Ag what does that say Aglint yeah it is Aglint all those ages ago, ages, years ago. Never got round to fitting them. Now's the uh, chance I've got finally to fit them. So that is what we've got coming up. Next video, I'm going to do all of these big, powerful, bright headlight bulbs. Then we'll move on to brake lights, indicators, and all the others. Okay. So there's gonna be six parts to this video in total. This is part one. This is the, uh, the whiteboard lecture. Don't worry, there won't be any more whiteboard lectures. That's it, maths done, okay? So you can all relax a little bit on that one, okay? So the next video, I'll be fitting these and we'll measure those and see which one's the brightest. Right, I hope that was useful and I hope you learnt some trigonometry again for the first time since being at school. I will see you in part two. I hope that video was useful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you, bye.